of Uganda Law Society and other elective positions will be happening this Saturday, 28 September 2024, at the Speak Resort in Munyonyo, where the Uganda Law Society will be holding its annual general meeting. Um, Isaac Semakade uh, is one of the contestants for the presidency. The other contestants, I have seen some of them, uh, actually they had joined the space as uh, listeners, so uh, maybe along the way we might... Um, uh, give a chance to some of them to actually tell us the positions that they are contesting for and uh, why people should consider voting for them as well. Because um, if they get elected, they will be serving with the president-elect. And we are hoping, um, what we are calling the back on track team, is hoping that in order to have a radical new bar, we'll have uh, Isaac Semakade take to the reins as the president of the Uganda Law Society. So, um, Trevor, if you can see uh, Isaac joining in there, kindly make I've, him a I've speaker. I've also sent him an invite. I'm trying to reach out to him. Okay, perfect. So we want to thank you members for putting aside time to come and join us so we can listen to the legal rebel. Um, there's been talk of, you know, uh, why the public is so much interested in the Uganda Law Society, which of course should be a good thing. Um, this morning I saw Anthony Natif arguing uh, in that line uh, that they should, the lawyers should actually be happy that members of the public are interested in, you know, in a proper and functioning law society. That is a vote of confidence in the legal profession. So it shouldn't be uh, something that uh, certain sections of the bar use to alienate members of, of the public. So I see Isaac is there. Uh, Isaac, kindly accept the speaker request that has been sent to you, and then we can proceed. All right. So just confirm that you can hear me. Uh, Isaac? Can you hear me? Isaac, can you hear me? Isaac, can you hear me? Uh, your sound is coming on and off. Your mic gets muted every now and then. Hmm. Yes, I can hear you. All right. So proceed. Hmm. You, we had, uh, you are addressing uh, the issue of sexual harassment. Please go ahead. Yes. Hmm. So I was addressing the issue of hamlets within the bar, igloos, you know, silos within the bar. I was addressing the issue of atomization within the bar, you know, the atomization of the Uganda bar, where people find their identity, you know, they find their soul and purpose. In, 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 in sub, sub sections of the bar and completely separate and segregate themselves from everything else that is the buzz, you know, the buzz moment and great purpose, um, in contemporary Uganda. This danger is part of what has, you know, led, led us in this moment where honestly it can no longer be hidden. That the, we have a soulless bar. Already, we are a colonial Frankenstein creature. We are neither trade union nor pure association. We are state backed cartel, yes, for providing legal services. But we say, host, say, say that again. You are state backed cartel. We, yes. <laughs> we are state backed cartel for providing legal services. We were not an independent legal profession. The, 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 the stronghold of the state is, 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 is is enacted within our foundational instrument, the Uganda Society Act. I'm done, I'm done. Sorry, um. No, from the time of enactment in 1967. No, sorry, uh, uh, Can you hear me? Yes. From yes, I can hear you. Of, uh, from the time of enactment in 1967, has it been amended ever since? Yes. Has that act been amended? Ever? No, the, the amendments have been, uh, no, no comprehensive, no, none whatsoever. However, there has been uh, further interference through the Advocates Act of 1970, where duties, functions, rights, privileges of the bar were taken from the bar and uh, into another executive organ called the Law Council. For instance, enrollment, discipline, you know, control of legal education. The, the state usurped all these functions of the bar. The state paternalizes the bar, it infantilizes members of the bar as if they need its oversight, as if they need its protection to such excessive levels. You know, it, it made sense when the bar was a new creature, an independent African bar <laughs> was a new creature. But how can we be defined by our history? Hmm? Permanently. At no point have we stood tall and said we are now fully a bar like any other and we, we demand the same standards accepted at the UN and IBA level. And there is sufficient doctrine, the UN standards for independence of the legal profession, the IBA standards for independence of the legal profession. Our, our ULS Act, our Advocates Act are a gross departure. And so 
for many members of the bar today in the contemporary time. They don't think they can fully, you know, achieve self fulfillment, self development through this state backed cartel. So that's why you see these offshoots. Young lawyers section and female lawyers network, female lawyers section, and within the female lawyers section, you have all these other isms, isms down, you know, down the, just a downward spiral. So that brings me then to, I hope you, against this context. Yes, yes. Go ahead. We can begin then to understand where this excessive hugging of a sexual harassment complaint as a source of identity for some people with this institution, you know, becomes an obsession to the point we saw at Makerere. And for me, I was not going to shy away from saying enough is enough. We need to collectively retrace the soul of the bar. And we are not going to do that when we are all still stuck in these thickets of, of, eh, of the lost soul of the bar. We must accept the soul is lost. We are in a collective search for the soul of the bar. And these grievances, ideological actually, because <laughs> I'm not anyone's aggressor, as you made the point clearly, but there is this notion that some people can't help, that men, any man, every man, especially men seeking power, men achieving any success, have, achi have achieved it at, at, at the cost and expense of female members of the bar. You know, these are sub subconscious grievances that inform the presence of, of some of these conversations um, that, that, that limit our, our national moment. So, in that particular context, for instance, um, the bar is a place of work. Therefore, the sexual harassment policy of the bar is a matter that was discussed at the national level when we are discussing Section 7 of the Employment Act and the sexual harassment regulations under the Employment Regulations, under the Employment Act. It, it, it's a finished conversation. Any workplace that has more than seven people by law must conform to the standards set in the Employment Act and the Sexual Harassment Regulations under the Employment Act. Anyone claiming that they do care about women's rights and then at the same time exposing ignorance of a matter we discussed thoroughly and closed in 2006 and it's now a matter of implementation at, at, at a farm level. At a farm level. Okay? We should be progressively moving to full implementation of Section 7 and Section 6, non-discrimination in the Employment Act at a farm level. That high watermark was set in 2006 for someone to relitigate. Sorry. For someone to relitigate a set of legislate, matter of legislation as if it's a matter of, you know, as if it's a missing gap. It's, it, it's a waste of time. Hmm? It's a waste of time and, sorry, I'm, I missed my, my moments here. My phone yeah, is acting. For the benefit, for the yeah, benefit of members who might not be very familiar with your work over the last 10 to 15 years, could you highlight some of the landmark cases that you have handled or that you have championed that, uh, that are in line with, you know, fighting for the cause of women uh, as a whole, not just um, the harassment and the likes? Please uh, take us through just a few of the, 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 the major ones. Please uh, take us through just a few of the, the, the major ones. Uh, the team that is next to you, the major one. The team that is next to you, I can find the sound for your devices. Ah, the main, the, uh, colleagues, I, are you using phones? You may want to switch them off or something. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm sorry I didn't get the full question, the, the last question you asked. I took you to some of the major what? Can you hear me? For the listeners that are not familiar with your work. For the listeners that are not familiar with your work. Yes. The, the echo is still coming to those members. The echo is still coming to those members. members. To those members. To those members. I don't know. Uh, Okoto, no? oh, is this still there? Okoto, no? Okoto is not here. Mm -hmm. For now. Yeah, is this still there? Is this still bad? No, now it's okay. No, now it's okay. All right. Hey. Mm. Okay. Hey. okay. I need to put down the phone. Oh. I need to put down I the phone. I need to ask his question. I need to ask his question. All right. Okay. So my question okay. was... So my question was... Hey. Let them just step away a bit. Okay, I'm listening from a, a, a distance, eh? Okay, so my question is, um, for the members that may not be familiar with your body of work, could you kindly highlight um, the few cases that you have handled in the past that are, uh, are to do uh, that, that are centered on the cause of women issues, uh, not just sexual harassment, but a number of other issues uh, affecting women in the civic space within the country? Please take it away. 
Well, uh, thank you. Um, thank you for mentioning this because it's, it, it's, it degrades the cause of women, uh, to, to discuss their sexual harassment cases so publicly for some form of credibility marker without their permission, you know. And some people like to think that men don't have that credibility because they are men. And that's from, that's from brainwashing I, I don't subscribe to. But yeah, um, I challenge the Female Lawyers Network to, to write a profile of my work in the female, you know, co- in the, in the, in the field of women and the law. And I was shocked that they just plagiarized Flavia's article in the Independent of eight years ago. <laughs> and in the space of eight years, there's just too much we have done, which even the most prominent women lawyers couldn't touch or couldn't do or perhaps didn't even see. It's called insidious harm to women's rights. Um, and by the way, we, the women don't have to be the clients uh, as such for some of these cases. For instance, I can tell you that for me the most significant case for women's causes was the case of Uganda National Diary Traders Association versus the Diary Development Authority and the Attorney General. This is a case which arose sometime in 2015 uh, when the government passed a, a statutory instrument under the Diary Development of, eh, Act prohibiting the marketing and selling of unpackaged and unlabeled milk in cities and municipalities of Uganda. You, you, you understand what was targeted here? Mr. Gesa? Livelihoods, 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 livelihoods. <laughs> livelihoods is secondary. But this is like lactation support. Sure, sure. The, the data shows, sure, sure. the data shows that, the data on the national hands shows that, uh, by them, Packaged and labeled milk, <laughs> which is accessed only through a supermarket. It served only 12% of the market. 88 to 90% of all Ugandans accessing milk accessed it in unpackaged and unlabeled, you know, modes of delivery. When I grew up in Masaka, we had somebody who delivers milk at the door. We called him Ref. He delivered all sorts of milk, including bongo. Yogurt. And this was an essential source of protein. Essential to my, de- my cerebral development. I don't think I would have the capacity, the faculty that I, I have now. I hadn't, hadn't married for being punctual. Every day. Supporting my mother to raise me. So for me, I instinctively saw the harm done to women's hopes and dreams in this law. And I did not expect any of the existing women's organizations to understand feminism to this level. This is a matter which consumed much attention. Only one woman, she was a journalist reporter, Innocent Navasa, at NBS. And I, I'm not surprised lately. I think she's a vegetarian and, and she's promoting the, the people to beg. Who reported this story endlessly, you know, fervently, like it's a big issue, but nobody was taking it as a big issue. This was a done deal. The three, the three presidents from Kenya, Uganda, and Rwanda had decided that this should be the norm. <laughs> you, you can understand the political geopolitics here. You have a Brookside president. Brookside is entering Uganda and it does it want competition. It wants that 80 plus 90 percent marketplace. And the president here says, actually, we want value addition. This woman has to go. These were my clients. They thought they can go and speak to the president. A woman from Kiruhura addressed the president on the eve of Independence Day in 2015, thinking that she could convince the president with all sorts of female feminist arguments to, and to, to, to rescind this ban. And the president told them off. That's when they returned to court and said, Mr. Semaka, do you to continue and get us an order quashing this ban? Because it won't just quash livelihoods. <coughs> it will intrude and interfere and obstruct and stifle Womanhood, as we understand it, not every woman can provide sufficient milk for their baby. So for me, I don't want Mr. Gessa to waste your time in, 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 in giving stories of women who have authorized me to put them on blast. I will not. Okay? I will elevate the conversation to this level. Sure, there are many cases we have done. Yeah, so let us move on. All right. Just, uh, All right. Just, uh, mic. Just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, okay um we ha- okay um we ha- just mute your mic 
Okay. Just get your mic. All right. So, um, I hope you can hear me. So, um, clear. all right, all right. So, my next question is that you have pegged your campaign on four Ds. That is decolonization, demilitarization, democratization, and digital transformation. Now, we have had a couple of questions coming through um, asking about the demilitarization. It seems it is the least understood of the four Ds. So, I'd like to ask you to use um, a few minutes to try and put some flesh on this uh, second D in your uh, campaign manifesto. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gesa. Uh, but uh, our people are not fair to us, Mr. Gesa. You held two spaces for us to uh, con contextualize the state of Uganda, right? Sure. Right from the arrival of sure. Captain Nugat. Uh, and uh, uh, those archives exist on your timeline. So if people are really sincere in their search of knowledge, they must put in the effort. They must allow themselves to get straight on their forehead and understand the man who is speaking things they can't understand. We woke up at 6 a.m. and spoke for seven hours explaining the misalization. Mr. Gesa, you remember that, that, that weekend? Very well. Very well. Yes. So anyway, doing the best I can, I would like to put it in three ways. The first that it is the role of the bar. It is the statutory role of the bar. Even the colonists understood that the legal profession, if we have one, and it's to be worth its salt, it should be the most, you know, frontline midwife for delivering a capable state out of <laughs> the word is called what? You know, out of this Frankenstein creature we created through violence, through fraud and through trickery. It's called a contraption. This colonial contraption you call Uganda was created through violence, genocide in the way I'm standing currently. This place lacks the markers of the genocide conducted by Lugadis army here in the way I'm standing. And, oh God. So, people like to have, you know, selective amnesia to sleepwalk through national development. And national, but you cannot run away from your history. You cannot develop until you understand where you're coming from. Okay? This country is Lugard's loot. A loot he got for Ibeko, the Imperial British East African Company. And when Ibeko couldn't exploit it properly, needed to build a railway, <laughs> what they call the Lunatic Express in the London papers of the time, it sold it to the British Crown. And the Union Jack was raised by Sir Gerard Porto in Fort Porto, where I was in the morning. He raised the Union Jack. That was where the deal to pass over the loot from a mercenary, a genocidal, a man, a gunman called Lugard, who had, who, who's, who's, who's sins in Nigeria <laughs> and the Niger Delta and the Benin Kingdom are available for anybody to read in the archives and museums of colonialism. But in Uganda, we love selective amnesia. So, when Porto gets Lugard's loot, he maintains Lugard's garrisons, Lugard's system of running us. You know? They try to humanize it through agreements. But you should read, you need to come into this conversation, first and foremost, by reading Professor Karujile's A Political History of Uganda, particularly the chapters on the Wazungu of Faransa Wars in Uganda, which threatened the throne of Uganda. You know? How does Kamaka Mwanga and Kavariga Omukama end up deported from these lands into Kenya and finally to Seychelles to be the Ghana and their lands taken from them, their civilizations smashed and rewritten into these agreements and, and orders in council you know so we have maintained this history and revisited. It is high time we start from the beginning and discuss how the gun came to be a creature of governance in this country. And how, so why some people are convinced that we cannot remove the gun from the center into the periphery, into the barracks. It, it has to be the sine qua non of governance. Anyway, the point I'm saying, I'm making is that even the colonists knew in, by 1956, after going through what they called 
<laughs> they didn't use the word insurgencies. Called them uprisings in Uganda, but like uprising. That's what they called them. Traders uprising, farmers uprisings. But they took, they were, they were ceaseless. The, the, the colonists did not create the bar out of love for us. She created the bar, the, the Ugandan society, to, 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 to help the provincial government mitigate these uprisings. Through a number of ways, including, uh, snapping up leaders for these uprisings to prevent the national movement, an African renaissance. Put them into the bar and then lock them up. You know, seal them, give them, turn them into careerists. Enter them into Lejiko. Give them a lifestyle. Let them, you know, separate this African intelligentsia from the people and so on and so forth. So it was again an exercise in colonial atomization, colonial hegemony. Um, uh, okay. Sarko Hain proudly talks about this. But the point I want to stress before I leave is that even the colonists knew that this is unsustainable. And at some point, the bar must stand up and say, we are the midwife of a capable state that upholds and abides by the rule of law and not the rule of gun or rule by law or rule of man. That if Uganda is to be secured as a viable state in a community of nations, it must not only subscribe to the rule of law, it must have soldiers for the rule of law. Conscious-minded attorneys who understand that the right to practice law is burdened by a public duty to negotiate the gun from the center to the periphery. But what we see today is different. It is advocates renegotiating the gun into the center of people's lives without qualms. And this time even where I'm standing here in Winyoro, it is advocates down there in Kampala renegotiating the gun to come and grab people's livelihoods, strike people's lands under the name of ECOP. These are conversations we must force. We must force on you. You've had your chance to negotiate a better livelihood structure, a better, you know, you have wonderful policy papers on national development, but it's not failed. I was, uh, I was in Kassese last evening. We saw the flood sites <laughs> and the government official, the government turned up to block us from, from learning from the citizens the extent of carnage. It was being explained to us that where we are standing was a primary school. It was being explained to us that the government is struggling to, to find a new site for a health center because where Nyamwamba, when Nyamwamba rises, it sweeps the, the health center. It's a catch 22. So these difficult conversations, the gun turned up last evening, the gun turned up on me to stop that conversation, to stop a person who has struggled from Buganda to understand a climate change issue in Kassese. I was shocked. This is still a garrison for Porto, for, for Lugard, in any other name. So it is important that they come from and negotiate this. The, the second thing about demilitarization is that we have a new dispensation, the Uganda People's Defense Force, in the Constitution. That dispensation is called the Civil Military Divide. The civil military subordination, that the military shall be subordinate to civilian authority. There shall be a separation of power between civilian authority and military authority. And there shall be a hierarchy of power. For the time I have been active at the bar, I have seen military incursion into civilian turf. Without pushback from the bar. Without pushback from civilian leaders. It has been normalized. People have examples. You seem to be stopping me, so I want to go into details. But the third and last point is that even within the military, the militarization means a military commanded by rule of law, not just superior orders. The notion of superior orders has been rendered defunct by the constitution. Orders must be constitutional. They must follow law. So who is helping the lowest rank officer to ensure that he or she isn't burdened by unlawful and constitutional orders? We have erased our own military from public life. I'm speaking as a lawyer here. We do not have, we do not demand sufficient rights for the military, both during peacetime and wartime. I represent soldiers who are deployed in, in uh, Somalia. I represent soldiers and paramilitary units that returned from Afghanistan and Iraq. And they have concerns a law firm cannot manage. That's why I'm standing to use the pulpit of the bar to make these concerns available for Ugandans to understand what happened to your returnees from Afghanistan. Do you know where they are? Do you know what they are going through? And do you know what danger they pose to you? Okay. Um, Isaac, can you still hear me? Hello? Isaac, we seem to have lost your sound, but let me ask a question which has come through on our thread. Um, 
Chumsime says Isaac's ideology hinges on the principle of pluralism, alternate thinking, and diversification in school of thought. After reading his eight-page article on Kiriwa Tiwanuka, which was more of a declaration of war, how is he going to navigate the already volatile relationship between the Uganda Law Society and the bar? Would you like to take that on? We seem to have lost Isaac as a speaker. Uh, Isaac, could you reaccept our request, speaker invite? Let me try reaching out to him and ask him to join again. Okay, maybe in the meantime I could allow one or two of the people that are requesting the mic to pose their questions. Uh, Charles Wachiku, please ask a question. We will put it to Council Isaac Semakade to answer it shortly as we try to get him reconnected as a speaker. Charles Wachiku, kind of unmute yourself and ask your question. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, let me first thank um, Council Isaac. For, so of course, my question is in regards to the way things have been moving around the entire country. Mostly, I don't know if it has been already been answered. You've not seen the Constitutional Court as active as it, as it used to be. Yeah, as of the late, you've not seen uh, the precedents that we used to see coming out of the Constitutional Court. So I don't know what can say that is going to do about it to make our courts active and uh, the Ugandan judiciary to be seen working. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Charles. I think we can have, uh, there's another one who had requested. To my Derek, please uh, ask your question. Derek. Hello, good evening. My name is Derek. Uh, I would actually like to know what is the like the voting process for this because I wasn't actually aware of the ULS before, but it, I saw on social media it took so much volume and I, I, I've been very interested. I'd like to know the voting process. Are you are you an advocate? No, I mean I'm I'm, I'm an interested citizen. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, the voting is is uh, hey, uh, Trevor, I've invited <laughs> including myself. No, I, I didn't mute. You can unmute it. I didn't do it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Hey, this is crazy. Twitter Spaces is a very unstable product. So, um, uh, this ULS only members of the Uganda Law Society, paid up members of the Uganda Law Society will vote, um, when they hold the AGM this weekend. Not all citizens, but then, uh, these are some of the conversations that Isaac is bringing to the table, uh, because, uh, when you look at the mandate of the ULS, it serves, um, the public. So maybe at a future date, we should be having a discussion as to how the public gets represented in these processes, um, at the Uganda Law Society. Isaac Semakad has already raised, um, an issue with the representation of, um, advocates on, uh, the Judicial Service Commission, uh, the Uganda Law Society of the Judicial Service Commission, and he says they are doing selection as opposed to election. So that is uh, something that um, we will still ask him to elaborate further. Thank you for taking time to ask. So we will now move to Turina Yo. Turina Yo, please ask your question. Hello, my name is uh, Turina Yo Timothy, Junior Associate with the Zigalewe Government Company Advocates. But my question is uh, very simple to Councilor Isaac Um what, what, what solution is he going to bring? We have a big problem. The Law Development Center, we really need a solution. A serious solution. Mm. Yes, that's all. Which problem, which, which problem exactly is that the Law Development Center? Uh, the problem of the entries. The entries this time around, they, they took 28%, mm. um, 28% from every university. The other time they sent people to, they told them to wait another year. Mm-hmm. So they, they, should they bring back pre-entry? Should, I want to know his take. Should they bring back pre-entry? Should they mm. go on with the 28% from every university? Because this is, um, when it comes to the legal profession, LDC mm. is a very crucial institution. Mm. And it needs, okay. yes. Yeah, we're going to put that question to him. Um, okay. uh, Trevor, have you, uh, I have to it, give you a heads up. Uh, it, it seems like Isaac's internet has an issue. I, I, reached, I reached out to him on WhatsApp and it's not getting connected. Uh, but I think it will be interesting for that guy to kind of like also answer some question. As soon as he comes back, I'll let you know, but I'm giving you a heads up. You can ask some more questions. Okay, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, uh, thank can you. I guess I, uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Please ask your question. Thank you so much. Um, I'm a concerned citizen who is not a lawyer, but um, uh, has followed events in this country. My question is, uh, council is advocating for the rule of law, and that's at the forefront. But uh, previously, I've seen we have seen people storming the courts of law and nothing happens. We've seen judges act in a weird way, like uh, in the case of Kakwenza, nothing happens. We remember Justice Kavuma. All these are acts that are protected by the state or by the head of the state, right? And corruption and all these. So in, in, in a layman's language, for me, I would want to know how 
having uh, Council Semakade and restoring the rule of law with the same head of state that has been favoring all these funny acts or weird acts. How is the rule of law or how is Semakade being our council lead at the ULS going to see that all these are not happening, but uh, with, with the same state that is, has been up, carrying out and favoring all these acts? Again, I ask from a layman's language, not an advocate's side. So thank you so much. All right. Uh, thank you. The, your question is uh, taken note of. So we, will, we are going to put it to him to answer it. Uh, Numba, uh, I've given you the mic. Kindly unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Yes, please go ahead. Good evening to you all. And, uh, Good evening. The opportunity for me to ask your question. I'm Omar, Tendera Numba Senkai, an advocate affiliated to Nazwa Omar and Company Advocates. Whether we also have a candidate, that's one as well, uh, that's one as well, standing vice president, ULS. I, my question is, uh, yeah, I'd repeat, like to know, um, his name? Patuma Omar, Patuma Omar, vice president, ULS. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes, I would like to ask. Here, I'm talking about decolonization. Yes, hello? Yeah. Francis Parker talks about decolonization. I would like to deeply understand how is he going to do it? Because it seems that he's going to fight the establishment, which will be a very big war that can't be finished. I just talked to Isaac. He's going to join. We should be in 30 seconds. Please be uh, patient with us. But yes, he's rejoining. All right. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, uh, Council Mahal, please go ahead with your question. I'm, I'm saying, in his one year, he talks about decolonization. So, uh, our, uh, he has a lot of establishment. So how is Council Semak are going to decolonize the URS in just one year? And how is he going to do it? I would like to deeply understand that. So that maybe I can... Okay. Uh, before he uh, comes... I mean, before he consider him... Before he comes in... I guess I give me a chance at this one. I'm, I'm like thirsty for this one. From what Isaac has just said, from the history of how the Bar Association was formed, how do you now envision it? Because you now have some insights. You can sort of like build upon that and it will be interesting to see what you pick from that. Okay, but just to put it into context, this is a question that Isaac answered in an earlier space that we held with him, the one where, which he referred to earlier on tonight when he said we had a, we woke up at 6 a.m. He did explain that he's on Agenda 2060. He's not he's not looking at uh, being the Alpha and Omega of these uh, four Ds, but he's simply saying he's going to get the ball rolling, yeah, to start the process of decolonization. It's not that the process will start and end with his term of office, but it is um, he needs to get the ball rolling and set the stage. For, for the others. I mean, he, that's why you see he has focused a lot on young lawyers and even students who are still in law schools all over the country. He wants to have, you know, a change of mindset. Now that he's here, Trevor, is, uh, is he, uh, okay, he's, he's, he's joined. So please, um, I, I think he can continue to answer your question, but uh, let me start with the first question that was posed. So Isaac, just confirm that the sound is coming through. You can hear me. And then I'll put the questions that have been asked to you, and then we, we can get your responses. Okay. Uh. Can you hear me? Mr. Gessa, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Isaac? Isaac, you're loud and clear. Council Omar, I, uh, was that, uh, the, the, was, that was the question complete? Were you still continuing with the question? Because that bit he has already answered it before. I, I just wanted to bring you up to speed. Uh, kind of unmute yourself and uh, tell us if you had completed your question. Yes, I, I think that, that's enough. All right, all right. Thank you. So, Welcome. Uh, Council Osema, can yes, you can hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. I can't hear anything. I can hear you. Isaac, I can hear you too. Isaac, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, so there is, we can take another question here. The legal guru. Um, please ask your question as we try to get Isaac to fix his sound issues. The legal guru, please ask your question. The mic is yours. The legal guru, Twine Mukama, are you there? Have yes, you forgotten uh, the name you are using on Twitter? I, I, <laughs> no, no, no. I think it was. Uh, I think it was uh, technical glitch on my side. <clears throat> but uh, I don't know whether you can hear me right now. Please go ahead. All right. So my, I, I think I have about two concerns, and uh, the first one is uh, I'm, I think I'm going to continue, or rather ask for uh, to contribute on what the previous speaker uh, asked concerning uh, 
how Council Semakade is going to try and help with uh, the issue of LDC. For example, I can assure you that yes, whereas it was uh, uh, for the benefit of uh, young lawyers trying to join LDC from uh, universities for, 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 the, for the locals and LDC basically to scrap uh, pre entries we have had a situation where there has not been a clear criteria used to admit students uh, from uh, universities to the Bacos. And uh, the example is uh, this uh, most recent admission in which we looked, because at first we actually thought that they used uh, the CGP. Uh, uh, whoever has higher marks goes in there first. And then, but now we have a situation where we have people with lower CGPs joining, uh, those with higher, not to, basically there is no, we've not been availed with the structure of how LDC or what criteria it uses to admit students. That's one. Now, two, as our practicing advocate, I'm very much uh, interested in finding out how our candidate, uh, Council Semakad, is going to help us with uh, <clears throat> the, live, the lack of, 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 of equal leverage between the bar and the bench. I can assure you that, uh, for example, previously I had caught up country, I will not mention which one it is, uh, but I traveled from Kampala all the way to the district, which was about 200 or plus kilometers, only to reach there, and then I was told that the magistrate or the judicial officer had taken that children to school, and therefore, she couldn't attend to the matters that day. And I'm wondering, we have uh, we have uh, WhatsApp groups on which advocates uh, subscribe, and I uh, would expect that there would be communication, but also, how is it going to ensure that personal matters, personal matters do not affect matters fixed by court, because it is a very big inconvenience to the advocate. And then when it comes to advocates, you come, if, if you get a few um, challenges here and there, enter court five minutes left, your matter is dismissed and counsel is uh, ordered to pay cost. So how, how is Council Semakad going to help us with that? Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Igeza. All right, thank you. Council, have you had the question from uh, Tunia Mukama? Isaac? Isaac, can you hear me? Your mic is muted. Isaac, your mic is muted. Can you hear me? Trevor, can you try to reach out to Isaac? Let me do that right now. All right. So uh, those questions have come through. I have a few others that I saw on the timeline. I'll just try to pull one or two. Okay. Um, Council Alex Luganda says, I love Semakadi's approach as it makes the law society relevant and accountable to the public. Um, okay. Um, then. Okay, so we are going to have Council Semakadi speak through Okoto Laz account. Um, I've just allowed Okot in as a speaker so he can use that account to answer the questions. Um, in the meantime, we can take, just before Council starts speaking, let's have Nkubi ask his question. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I am uh, I am Patka Nkuri with the GSA Advocates, but also White and Test. My question is for Council Semakat, for all of us who actually believe in his idea and believe that he's going to be able to deliver us where we want to be. So um, I've been very observant over Twitter, and I've listened to lots of senior lawyers, and by senior lawyers I mean those aged 70, 60, and all of that, plus the young ones, 40 and below. This question is for us as a group, all of us who support Semakade. And at the end of the day, on Saturday, we are going to go and be able to cast a vote. Or those of us who are not able to cast a vote, but are able to influence someone to go and vote. From today onwards, his achievements have been articulated. I can read on the platform and I see all the public interest work he has done. I think it would be a good thing moving forward to counter some of the arguments or the discussions with some of his achievements. Because as we speak, just to conclude quickly, there are two other spaces happening. The Ethelene space and then also one by Robert Kapschenga. And what I am picking from all those ones, the debate is about how to mingle and uh, not do away with some of the offices, DPP, Attorney General and all of those, but how to get along with those with, with those we don't agree in terms of modus operandi or how we proceed, and then those that want to bring around change. So my question to us as a team is, having had these achievements, how do we go forward from today onwards so that we spread tangible achievements of Sema Kadde's public interest litigation so that it can then affect those who are able to vote on Saturday? Besides that, more the, 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 the formula we've been using where, you know, we are posting our photos and all of that. So how do we then, these remaining four days, champion a credible, tangible, result-oriented campaign on social media? You don't need to be a lawyer to, to do that. You've seen the results. They have been typed in the group and the achievements. How do we share them? How do we counter the insults and the abuse with these achievements? That's my question. To us as a group, probably that can be answered, answered as council gets back onto the space. Thank you. All right. We already have Council Semakade on the space. So, um, Council, would you like to start with that? And then I'll put the other questions to you. Please take it away. Okot, 
Um, I have allowed your account, so Council can speak through your account. Of course. Uh, this is Isaac. Okay. I'm back. Mm. Go ahead. Well, I thank Pascal. I think Pascal's question concern wasn't only to me, it was to others. But before they jump in, I had him mention uh, uh, the, the common refrain of, of the opposition, of the cowards that we, we deploy the insults and the, and the words. And we, we deploy the right to insult um, in reconfiguring national conversation. Well, we do that purposefully. First and foremost, it's constitutional. But secondly, it is complementary. As you say, Mr. Postal and colleagues on the space, as you may have seen, as you may have observed, we are also doctrinally minded and we have written proper English. Dr. Sarah has a, an interesting PhD work, How to Be a Proper Woman in a Time of AIDS. We have been proper lawyers for 14 years and we are sick and tired of being sick and tired of not receiving propriety from our colleagues. And what do you do then? Okay. What do you do then if insults can sufficiently put people to, pro to propriety? So do not run away from our use of insult. It's, it's a legitimate democratic tool for forcing difficult conversations which proper people don't want to have because they get to keep the national conversation through these linguistic rhetorical devices like propriety, humility, decorum, etiquette, you know, gratitude, distinction, your honor, your worship. Show me the honor you worship. Why should I worship you when you are just a conveyor belt for corruption? You are just you, you are just a machine of the law. You lack a conscience. You lack a soul. You have nothing exemplar about you. Not grammar, not substance, and not even legal equity. You deserve to be criticized, insulted, and chased out of the judiciary. Now, we have learned, and we are grateful for tools that can democratize conversations. So we can expose dim witchery. You know, without fear or favor. So I leave the rest, but I wanted to make the case that we should not be seen to have been bad actors. In, in launching insult, we were doing a solemn civic duty to invite the highest number of people onto an issue of great importance that those who seek proper manners from us have failed to give sufficient attention to. You invite the prison. The prison can capably stand on its tip and it must always be sitting on its base. I beg to submit. Okay, uh, making a prism stand on its tip is quite an ask. So uh, now let me just run you through the questions that came through when you you were disconnected. Uh, the first question was on the constitutional court not being as active as it used to be. I think this member has uh, uh, memories of the constitutional court uh, in the I mean the days of Paul Kawanga Semogere, um, Dr. James Ranyarare, and others. Uh, this is a discussion, an extensive discussion that we held with you uh, on uh, reverse lawfare uh, about three weeks ago. So he's, he's saying, what would you do about this if you get elected as president of the Uganda Law Society to, to you know, to make the judiciary more active as it, it, as it used to be? Uh, he says activity seems to have gone down, uh, which I think inadvertently he's um, attributing to the docility at uh, the Bar Association. Please take it away. Um, to, 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 two answers, or oh, a two-part answer. The first is, I have done something about this already. I am an award-winning, high-profile attorney who has brought attention to this issue. And not just as a critic. I picked two million shillings for my old boys association and paid nomination fees. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. I went to my old boys association and I said, do you guys see what I see? Do you see what I told you, what I've been telling you? We can't proceed in this manner. And they gave it to me. So, I have rallied those closest to me to support me in doing things differently. I am seeking a political pulpit of some worth that can capably criticize the deputy chief justice who is solely concerned about the business of the constitutional court. There is a rule in the constitutional court rules called Rule 20 which says that the business of the court of appeal which also sits at the constitutional court is solely to be determined by the deputy chief justice. Solely. And as you know, the current Deputy Chief Justice occupies the office illegally and constitutionally. He was imposed on us by the President and by the Uganda Society, by the Judicial Service Commission, and by all these elites, all these big law firms. You think they know. They know. He's a good man, Mr. Richard Taylor. He's a good man. But he didn't apply for the job. He applied for another job. I hear so you. I don't, know. I don't know how people have been doing this. How do you expect him to do the right thing? How do you expect him to do the right thing? It's, it's schizophrenic. Mm. We cannot pick and choose which wrongs to criticize. We must be consistent in asking for doctrinal purity. 
from everybody who accesses public office. So for me, I've done something. I've written essays. They have reached, you know, this office we have defended. It is Legal Brains Trust versus the Attorney General, which sued the president in 2013, in 2014, when he maintained a rogue judge, Kavuma, in the office of acting chief justice, acting the chief justice, acting everything. And we said this nonsense must end. Bruce mm. Everton, I was there drinking beer in Sheraton, doing nothing about it. It is us, Semaka, who thought a lot of mandamus, and Justice Elizabeth was about to issue it, and then a phone call came that you, the, the, the government has capitulated. It will now give you your caturebe. I don't see my applause. I don't see my applause. I see insult against me. No, counsel, I think that is, uh, that is a very solid point, uh, and it answers some of the questions that uh, members have been posing as to how your radicalism will help to... People don't seem to, to get how the art of negotiation works, especially when you are negotiating at a national stage. They don't seem to understand the back and forth, the pushback that needs to come from players like the Uganda Law Society and, and, and other citizens that take their civic duties uh, quite seriously. I think that is a very good example. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, Justice Katrina would have remained on KTV indefinitely, hadn't we sued. The bar, Ruth Zewatinda, called for a boycott of just one day, the, the, the lawyer function, just one day, a one-day boycott. And they went back to their tennis clubs and golf clubs. These goody goody lawyers. These goody goody lawyers are no good. Young okay. lawyers, if you have less than five years at the bar, accept none of the culture you are found at the bar. It's rotted through and through. That is the first thing you can do. I can't do that for you. If you can't smell the stench of Chitezi, I can't help. I can't help you. I am only going to do what is capable, which is within my capability and my interests. Okay. Which are, our interests are probably aligned coincidentally. Council, uh, next question came from Turina Yo Timothy, who says, uh, what solution are you going to bring to the problems currently bedeviling the Lord Vormen Center, where uh, they admit uh, only about 28% of all the people coming out of uh, universities, law schools around the country? Um, and then also that same question uh, was raised by Tunemu Kama, uh, still about the LDC admissions to the bar course. Yeah, so um, you have been very passionate about this LDC question. So would you kindly reiterate your stand and what yes. kind of interview you foresee during your tenure as uh, U.S. president if elected this Saturday? First and foremost, our research already exists. It will now be laid out on a proper pulpit, which cannot be evaded. The president of law, the head of the bar, the true head of the bar, not the fake head of the bar, the, the, the so-called attorney general of Washington. No, the true head of the bar will speak doctrinally without prevarication, without hesitation, that LDC is illegal, unconstitutional, moribund, and must be disbanded. It is beyond its sell by date. We shall lay out at most 24 alternative options for postgraduate pathways to the bar. Okay? We shall be saying nothing new. However, we shall be stressing what a gang of roads, including Pamela, whatever she, her name is, the one who accessed the office of director of LDC illegally and unconstitutionally, and sits there illegally and unconstitutionally, while your senior lawyers allow her to do that. Yet they know she sat no interviews, wasn't shortlisted, and was imposed there. She already had a job at the Uganda Reform Commission, but she was put there by force of Chile Wachwanka to continue this carnage. So we shall speak proper English and proper legitimate pathways, and we shall also invoke Article 29 of the Constitution to invite all law students of Uganda to come and picket at LDC until it is closed completely and the government states, puts out a proper white paper. Okay? It cannot be training lawyers of 2024 through a white paper, an ad hoc white paper that brought LDC to existence. You must understand the true history of LDC. The University of London announced that it would cease existing in East Africa by 1970. So a department of law was created within the Faculty of Social Sciences at Macquarie University in 1968, and this first head was the late German Kakosia. He would graduate students around 1970, and they would need to enter the legal profession. So an act was made in 1970, the LDC Act, to receive his first graduates. This was a, a triage law, an emergency law. Why are we still treating, why are we still pretending that there's an emergency that we need to manufacture lawyers? For, for, for a recently formed independent government. We've been independent for so long, so long, it's nearly 60 years. So we have to force the issue. We shall force the dinosaurs, we shall bang the table and push them off the, 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 the destiny of law and lawyers and legal institutions and legal culture. We now have proper results of their failures. They are just haven't been properly 
uh, articulated. Professor Sempewa and Pamela Tibikiwa have pretended to study the issue and they have pretended to provide uh, recommendations mm. which do not fundamentally solve the, the problem. So we are going to use our own agency as young people and say enough is enough. Mm. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I think uh, you've uh, answered that question. You want uh, to perform uh, what, uh, in my interpretation, a radical surgery to try and uh, force people to contextualize the position of LDC in contemporary Uganda. Um, the conditions under which it was established are no longer obtaining. I think, for me, that is well prosecuted from your end. Um, I'd like to pose another question to you that has come from the members of the TL, which says that if you were the president of the ULS at the time when there was an altercation between um, CJ Owing Dolo and uh, Justice Esther Chisachi, what would you have done? How would you have approached it? Over to you. I am presently of counsel to Justice Esther Chisachi. I am prohibited by the rules of subjudice to comment on that. Okay, okay. That is well uh, taken note of. Okay, another question that has come through, it came from a gentleman called Emmanuel, says that Council Semakade is advocating for the rule of law, but we have seen a number of, on a number of occasions uh, the military storming the courts of law. Uh, then we have seen judges acting in a weird way and nothing happens. Um, how will Council Semakade help uh, to address such issues if the person who has been presiding over the state of affairs, the current head of state, is still in office? Please take it away. Look, I'm not going to preside over an infertile bar. That question comes from a person with an infertile mind. A person who thinks that they have no agency of their own and Semakade is standing as their superman, as their you know, all protector. No, I'm going to make it very inconvenient for you to remain an attorney of Uganda if you don't turn up to the great questions of the day. I have made that very clear. I'm not just seeking a vote to occupy an office. I'm seeking a mandate which is fully agreed upon. And that's why some people are scared because they don't want to waste their status. They know I am asking them to run miles. They would have to buy new shoes. Some people are scared. I'm going to put them on a treadmill. So I won't be running alone <laughs> and I won't be fighting alone. We shall use the collective agency of the bar to solve these issues. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, perfect. So we have Okui Mike. Uh, Okui Mike, please put your question to Council Semakade uh, right now. Unmute yourself and ask. Mike Okui, please ask your question. Okay, um, as we wait for Mike Okui to uh, come through, there is another question that was raised, um, that you have talked about decolonization. This was by a uh, council called Omar. Uh, he should be a voter. So he says that um, you, while you're talking about decolonization, you seem to be um, aiming at taking on an entire establishment. Um, so how are you going to do that? I think you've, you've answered that, but you can still uh, make a comment on that. Go ahead. It's okay. The colleague has not been introduced to the pedagogy of decolonization. Every day, right from the moment I swear in, I will conduct a pedagogical class in the open. By the time I'm done, you will understand the techniques and tactics of decolonization. You, you, you will be infatuated with the idea. In fact, you'll be better than me at executing it in every aspect of your professional and personal life. So don't worry. The colleague is just asleep. We shall awaken him. All right. Uh, Principal D, please pose your question. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, thank you so much. Am I loud and clear? Please go ahead. Yeah, so uh, my question is, uh, Council Isaac is, is going to have a direct confrontation with the Attorney General, who, who, who we take as the, the, the leader of the bar. So I, I, I want to know how is it going to, 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 to make sure that the bench is, is, is working with the bar, even with their disagreements. That is number one. Then number two, uh, I, I want to even advocate more for support of Isaac Semakadi because uh, currently I'm in two spaces. There's the other one, and all the rest of the candidates are there, and they are all discussing him. His character, his what, and I'm just happy that I want to just say, let's all support Semakan. <laughs> so, so when you see people attacking the man, uh, if I need to, you remember when uh, Lionel Messi was still playing in European football, uh, teams used to, to have a crowd of players gang up on him simply because the moment he could get the ball, they knew how dangerous he could be. They knew the potency in him having the ball. So they always had to throw, you know, a, a crowd of players around him. That ex exactly explains the situation at hand. Uh, Council yeah. Semakan, please uh, respond to Prince Body. I would like to thank Prince Body. Uh, and I've done this already before on the TL, to thank him for succumbing the fluff and the fog of brainwashing out there on the TL to arrive at just the vision Mr. Semakari has been able to, you know, illuminate despite the difficulty of time, you know, technological glitches. For, for all who care, 
to understand what is highly demonized, you know. I would like to thank Principal D for being an excellent study in objective Principal citizenship because he has said many bad words about me before. And he came to the TL and made an apology and said he, he still has one nibbling concern. What is Toko said about me? For which Toko will apologize at some point soon because he has already received a legal notice to be sued. So at some point soon, Toko, if you are listening, you must apologize for putting poisonous words about Semakadi to people like Prince Podi and preventing them from achieving their full potential as citizens and participating in these conversations free of contamination and pollution. So Prince Podi, you're my citizen of the week and I, 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 I embrace your endorsement wholeheartedly. I would like to tell you, Toko is a liar. I will stop there. Okay, but Toko damaged you. He damaged your understanding of a reading intellectual of the day. But nonetheless, you have fought your way to the table and you have banged it loudly and proudly in my favor. And for that, I take no offense. Everything else is forgiven. Okay. <laughs> Ronald, if I may. Yeah, Nkobi, please go ahead. So, um, thank you for that. Isaac, this is, a, this is the point that I was trying to make earlier. Not that I, I, I am afraid of the struggles, but going back to today and in light of what Principal D has, has said, these remaining days until Saturday, I think the best thing for us, Team Semakade, to do is to, to counter all those social media engagements with the tangible results that Semakade has achieved. I can tell you authoritatively when I speak that I have been interacting with quite a lot of lawyers, not the young ones, 40 and below, but 70s and 60s, and they want to support Semakade. But also remember, not all of those are going to vote. So the ones that are going to vote need to see on social media or in person his tangible achievements, which have been typed into the group. So principally, that is how you counter. Take the hit, but counter with his tangible results from today onwards. You talk about something, bring a case, bring a testimony, bring a public interest litigation case that he handled. That's number one. Number two, again, Council Semaka, I don't want to take you back that, but maybe this is a question for the listeners and for the lawyers who probably already know or not. Just to inform us, the position of President Uganda Law Society is not a paid position. The President does not receive a salary or anything of the sort, except as I've come to learn, the CEO who handles, I think, daily operations. Now, my question goes to Council Semakadi, probably for the benefit of us to know. How is he prepared in this fight against the establishment to fund the activities for the change that he wants to bring into place? Because remember, you're challenging the status quo of the Attorney General and all of those and everywhere. So how are you prepared financially? to put through your achievements while at the same time operating a radical operation against the status quo. I hope I am understood. For example, when uh, Senior Counsel James Sebogany was president of Uganda Law Society, again, uh, the person used to try so much to actually regroup resources by himself to make sure he proceeds with his work rather than depending on what the society by then, which didn't have an office, didn't have a building, could offer. So how are you going to financially survive while you challenge the status quo and the radicalism? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nkovi. And uh, what you have done actually is to retrace me to the remnant of Principal D's concerns, uh, uh, which are doctrinal. Uh, Principal D, we don't need to be friends uh, to provide Ugandans what my land friend uh, Native calls a safe corridor, uh, within which to enjoy a minimum package, a desirable package of citizenhood. Um, no, we don't need to be friends. The Constitution actually envisages a separation of powers, checks and balances. It, separ it envisages vi vigilance, eternal vigilance. Of a citizen. When you see Article 17 on duties of a citizen under uh, paragraph 29 of the national objectives and, and directive principles of state in the constitution, the citizen is overloaded with the office of the citizen is overloaded with so much mandate. You, you know, in paragraph 29, it, it moves from paragraph A to paragraph G, those are seven, and in paragraph in Article 17, sub, sub, sub Article 1, it moves from paragraph A to paragraph G, those are 10, so that's a total of 17 duties of a citizen. And in paragraph in Article 17, sub Article 2, the citizen is also required to turn up for national service when summoned. Uh, by the executive through an act of parliament. So, the, the citizen is not supposed to be a loafer. Okay? Uh, now, I turn this to Mr. Mr. Nkubi, uh, Pascali. Uh, what resourcing has the constitution provided the citizen to do all these activities? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> okay? So, don't put the cart before the horse. Citizenhood is our birthright and it comes with duties, including our readiness to die. We must present ourselves, we must turn up to fight the battles of that day with what we have. We must come as we are. Uh, uh, Council, yes. um, if I could bring uh, the words of uh, Council Gawaya Tegule, when he appeared on NBS last week, he did say that an army of goats led by a lion stands a higher chance of winning a war than an army of lions led by a goat. Hmm? So, 
So we, I think people are, people are supporting the back on track campaign, uh, asking the lion to come to the front and lead the army. And this army of goats could actually stretch beyond the Uganda Law Society and include the citizens that you have clearly articulated are overloaded by the constitution. Yeah? Yes. What is expected of the citizens? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the mandate you. of the citizen, by my count, is in 17, you know, parag paragraphs. The mandate of the president is in four paragraphs. The mandate of, par of parliament is in three paragraphs. So the citizen. <laughs> Repeat that. The mandate of the, mandate of the citizen. Paragraph. Yes, uh -huh. it's in 17 items. Uh -huh. The mandate of the president in Article 99 and Article 98. You know, uh -huh. doesn't count. Doesn't even. It's a, it's a, it's a handful. Uh -huh. The mandate of parliament is three. You know, to make laws for peace, good order, and good governance of the country. Period. Uh -huh. And uh, well, in Article 79, three they say to protect this constitution and democratic governance. Maybe uh -huh. you can add those as a fourth and fifth. And the mandate of the speaker is not even written at all. In the mm. case of uh, Henry Tumukunde versus Attorney General, my Lord Justice Kanyehamba said it is, the, it, is, it is deliberate. The Speaker has inherited conversions of the, of the Westminster Parliamentary Model, which involve the liberty, full liberty of all the commons. In other words, in the House of Parliament, the Speaker can do no wrong, including shooting you down. <laughs> it's an absolute immunity. Of course, citizens have seen that. <laughs> before. Yes. So, yeah, so mm. the, the absence. So anyway, the point we are making is that. Mm. We, we must know. We, we must drop. You see, for so long, young people who are on the on the, on the side, for so long, you have been infantilized. Okay, mm. and, and and we see some of our so-called leading academic civil society organizations, law firms, continuing this puppet. No, to perpetuate this infantilization. Once mm. you drop out of it, and you mm. realize mm. that you're being, you know, they are stealing your lunch and supper mm, by pretending to be your your, your 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 intervening in your name and on your behalf, <laughs> we, we, without going through the ballot as I'm seeking to go through. At least for me, I'm going through the ballot, sir. And Mr. Nkubi and Pascal do not underestimate the meaning of a mandate solicited and obtained through the ballot. It is consequential. The chief okay. judge, the DPP, the president of the public must listen to it, must honor it. Okay. okay. Council. That carries of me, its own. Okay. Council, let me bring in the Law Society of uh, the Islamic University in Uganda. Law Society, are you, are you? Uh, we have made you speaker. Kindly pose your question uh, to Council Semakade. Unmute yourselves and uh, speak. Go ahead. We don't seem to get your sound. Please speak so we can be sure we can hear you. Law Society of IU, IU. It's unfortunate we don't seem to get your sound. Can I um, bring in Dungu? Okay, Law Society. Law Society, your sound was seemingly coming through. Kindly uh, uh, speak. Hello. Thank you very much. Um, I, would, I would first of all like to thank uh, Council Semakadi. Uh, my question is in relation to uh, the current trend of lawyers uh, and their, of course, misbehavior in relation to uh, most of the lawyers have engaged in fraud. And I have seen several complaints against lawyers. Of course, I'll not mention names, but there are certain firms in the in the country that are notorious for practicing fraud. And uh, there have been very many complaints against these firms as well as lawyers who are at the bar. So, and I think most of these young lawyers are also trying to take the same trend where you find a young lawyer uh, also engaging in fraud and you see them driving very expensive cars because they want to be like senior lawyer who has been practicing for several years yet uh, they haven't done any legitimate work so my question is how is how are you council semakade uh, going to how are you going to uh, cap this uh, vice within uh, of course our profession because it has really damaged the profession seriously uh, thank you very much thank you very much mr dungu i will not miss words i am offered my candidacy as the epicenter of a cultural war for the soul of the bar I have offered my candidacy as an altar and a shrine for soul searching and for coming to penitence. Those who have been doing these things must understand that should I swear in, it's game over. It's time to retire. I am going to teach young lawyers to make money fighting, chasing hyenas like you. Because there's no other work for them. Don't be deceived. Chase these hyenas. It's quite profitable. Use my own example. We shall chase these hyenas. It's only us to discipline them. The law council is moribund. It's dead. It must be, it must return our powers of discipline. It must return them to us. Okay? Under the UN and IBA principles of independence of the bar, those are our powers. They are not powers of government. We must be self, fully self regulated. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, let me bring in, um, let me bring in the Payas Jadwa. Payas, admit yourself and speak to us. Hi, everyone. Um, 
Uh, can I confirm that I'm, I'm being heard? Yeah, sure. You're being heard. Please go ahead. Ah, perfect. Um, this goes straight to Council Isaac. Isaac, I've been following you, and I've been following all the debates that you know uh, you have been holding on different platforms. And wherever you go, you would actually speak about, or you be against. I don't know whether it's the right term to uh, me to use. You be against the Attorney General, yeah, of this country. I really want to understand me as a person who didn't go to school that too much, but you know, uh, based on what I've been following, I also want to understand if like these things can connect dots. Yeah, Isaac, uh, your one of your statements you have been saying, you're like, uh, you're going to fight at an agent, and me as a person, I do support you, and I really want you to bang the table so hard. Yeah, but uh. In my own perspective as, as a person, I also understand how are you going to bang this table when uh, the Attorney General uh, is the same person uh, who is elected, sorry, who is appointed by the current president of this country. You know, I also want to understand um, if the dots will connect. You know, um, as far as, uh, say, yes, once. Uh, you seem to be struggling with your question. Can I help you to contextualize it? Please um, proceed. Uh, you you are saying Isaac has said he's going to open a war on the Attorney General. So maybe for I mean for the benefit of those that could not have had him speak about this at the beginning, um, uh, he has talked about it. But maybe he will repeat that for you. And then you are saying he, the Attorney General is appointed by the President. Um, I don't know why. Okay, why you're bringing that the, the appointing authority in? Uh, but then Isaac has already stated that Attorney General uh, is uh, as an office. First of all, he has separated the two things: the Attorney General uh, as an office and the current occupant of that office. So he has said the Attorney General as an office is given a certain position within our uh, within the nation where it is actually um, uh, highlighted as the head of the bar. Okay, um, and he he has reservations about that. And that are some of the things that he refers to as, you know, relics of, of the colonial administration. And then he also goes ahead to say the current occupant has issues. I think he will elaborate on, 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 on why he says so. Um, so now your question is, uh, how is he going to nurture, if I'm getting it correctly, how is he going to work with someone that he wants to get out of office? Is that what you're asking? That is it. But still, um, maybe, uh, if I'm, I'm corrected, I didn't mean that, um, you know, Antonio Geno uh, is not appointed. I don't know what that's it's right. First man, for me, I didn't go to school. All that much. Okay, so, fine. Yeah. That's why right. I wanted to ask him where. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you, Payas. Uh, Thank let you. Isaac answer your question. Hello. Uh, no, let's first get counsel to answer his question. Yes. Make one or two yeah. comments about it. I think he has dealt with most of these things. Eh? Yes. Yeah. I, I think uh, for my colleague, is Payas. Uh, mm. At the risk of repeating myself ad nauseum and us finding ourselves in an echo chamber, let me recommend you to the article I wrote three years ago. It is available on the Observer website, Ed <coughs> Joshua Nkai, the wrong man for the wrong job. I also invite you to, 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 to read about a suit we have filed supplementing that essay uh, by decolonizing the Uganda Law Society Act and the Advocates Act to strip it of the colonial hangover power. Th that confuses you, Mr. Pius, to think that Attorney General is the head of the bar. He's the head of shit. Okay? He's just a cabinet minister. Like you said, and I like that you corrected yourself. He's not elected, he's appointed. So this man didn't even pass any minimum citizen test. He's just a patronage baby, and whoever gave him the pain can take it due to citizen pressure. As for what shall happen and how we shall conduct our war, leave that to me and to the voters. The mandate has been clear. I have sought a mandate not to fight but to bury. If I receive the mandate, leave, leave the tactics and methods to me and, and, and my voters. We have right. discussed things in private. We have shared things in private with every member of the bar in every corner of the country. How we shall get this done? Right. Let's see how we are with us. We are going to build the cut. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Cynthia, you have a question? Please ask. Yes, hello. Good evening. Uh, please confirm you can hear me. Actually, right. mine... Okay, I, I do have a question, but it's not my question. It's from someone else. But before I go to that question, <clears throat> I just want to make a comment on what Isaac said about uh, citizenship being our birthright and that we... We have to we have to fight with what we have and uh, not because of what it's what is in it for us because someone was wondering how he's going to address the issues that he wants to address while he's in office, especially while he doesn't get a salary in that position and that really touched my heart and I think like we need to also shift our mindset uh, to be able to do what's right not based on what we can get out of it but because it's for the greater cause 
Yeah, so I'm not a lawyer myself, but as a Ugandan, I do believe that we need a robust law society that can challenge the status quo. So the question that I have for Isaac, actually, it's not me, but someone else sent this question to me. And he said that the million dollar question for the next president of the Uganda Law Society is how many cases have you got acquittal on in the last five years? Uh, that's the question. Did the person who asked the question, is that person an advocate? Uh, I'm not so sure. Let me see. Uh, I'm not, yeah, he seems like an advocate, yes. All right, uh, uh, Isaac, uh, we seem to have a number, a barrage of questions coming through. Uh, Isaac, please answer Cynthia's question. Well, uh, it's, it's a bit uh, vague. Is it cases where I have been, you know, charged and acquitted, or is it client cases? So the question, uh, did, yeah. did, did not properly center the subject mm. of acquittal. Is it Isaac's same or Isaac's clients? Mm. The I, clients, I am, I am there in this case, the, I think. Yeah, by the premise uh, of the question, and I, I will not uh, give it any further yeah, uh, you know, stature. Dignify it in this point. Trevor, 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 you shouldn't dignify it in the response. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we have uh, Turina, your Timothy is burning to come back. Turina, your Timothy, what question do you have for Kansasa Makade? Unmute yourself and ask your question. Timothy Turinayo. Um, a good good evening. Um, my question goes to Council Isaac. Um, as as a, as one of the people who are in support uh, of the back on track campaign, what countermeasures has he put in place to ensure that on Saturday there will be no that there will be no foul play in the election? That's all. Uh, Isaac, okay. where it on? comes as a, it, it's it's quite disheartening that uh, whenever Ugandans get uh, an uptick you know, in their belief of a democratic dividend, they self-sabotage themselves in the same moment by imagining that they can't defeat their forces of evil. This is a, a mindset situation. It's a mindset problem. But it's also a reality that this is a land and lived experience. I guess then we shall use the tried, tested, and trusted techniques of vote guarding Okay, I'm not the first Ugandan to contest an election against the establishment. I, within my team, I have a special squad called the Red Squad. You will see it. And it will do its job. I'm not its leader. Okay, it has, uh, it has its commandos. They have done this in every corner of the country since the return of elections in 1994. So I'm not bothered. That's a, a business for the Red Squad and the Red Squad okay. commander. Fair enough, fair enough. Council Isaac, uh, I have a question that has come to my DM. Uh, one gentleman is asking that I should ask you how you are prepared to lure members of the Uganda Christian Lawyers Forum or Fellowship, um, UCLF, and the Female Lawyers Network, ETC, who actually form a good section of the ULS membership to your side, that is, the Moralists versus the Radical Campaign. Please take it away. Anybody, anybody, defining themselves by an ism, or a sexual bar can eat and eat their vote. The Semakade back on track campaign is asking everybody to come to the well and drink from the same water as everybody else without isms and, or, 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 you know, these differences. We are, are in a search for the soul of the bar. And the soul of the bar is not found in any silo. Anybody who wants to keep their silo, you can keep their, your silo. If it has a candidate, vote that candidate. But if you want a radical new bar to provide better outcomes for your profession, for your life, for your country, you will come to the, you bring courage. You will, you will surmount these isms and vote Semakade and trust in the process of rescuing and conducting a radical revival of rule of law as the equalizer. Okay, of how lawyers negotiate within themselves, with their clients, with the state, with the courts, and with the public at large. We want a whole, we want a new deal. We have made clear the terms of the new deal. I have told everybody that if you see yourself a winner in destiny, vote me. If you see yourself a winner in history, don't vote me. Find a history candidate. I believe the two guys running against me are finding wonderful stories in history <laughs> to sell to you. Vote that. 
I see none, and I am asking that we chase destiny. There is a shining castle at the hill, and it won't elude us if we chase highness collectively through the, you know, the ballot process on September 28th. If you want to be handheld by an imam or a pastor to this process, I hope they guide you properly. It is too late at this time of the night for me to conduct a... Okay. Um, you know, all right, Council. Um, allow me to bring in Emmanuel Odong Kilara. Please go ahead and ask your question to Council Semakate. Okay, okay. I think, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, my, my question to Isaac is, uh, how do you plan to enhance the transparency and accountability with, within Uganda Law Society, and what specific measures do you in, uh, intend to implement to ensure that uh, society's activities and governance are aligned to the interests of its members and the broader uh, legal uh, community? Thank you. I, I believe in an independent secretariat. I believe in the goodwill of my colleagues who are running for the office of secretary. I am not running as your secretary. I'm running as your president, and therefore my primary, my quintessential mandate is to provide representation for the bar in contemporary Uganda. So, as to the question you have asked, I will also defer to the goodwill and proficiency of those who have offered themselves for the office of secretary. Yes, uh, we shall work together collectively to do that. I know the values I, I subscribe to, and from what I've seen, the, all those who are running for that, for that office ascribe to the same. So that's the question of tactics. If we find uh, uh, you know, a festering wound in the books, we shall invite the sergeants to do the job, to do the deed. I beg to submit. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Let me bring in Trevor. Trevor, my co host. Uh, would you have? Would you like to fill some questions? Uh, okay, to put some questions to Isaac. I would say maybe a comment. Uh, I was with Isaac in Bali when this campaign started, so I've sort of like seen it come up, and I've had Isaac explain most of these things. And I'm hoping Advocate will see the same thing he's seeing, and give him uh, that platform to continue preaching a message he has been preaching for years now. Isaac has a really interesting concept that he showed me too, which is called debris. That means going and searching within the archive of things that are happening, and that's a task that's going to fall on us as individuals. And if we don't do that, and only ask to be convinced, we are creating a danger for ourselves. We are allowing ourselves to get uh, drawn into narratives. So whoever will have the chance to listen to this space, I hope you really consider what he's saying seriously. I hope you go and find within the mountains of history and add on digital debris here on Twitter, and then see whether what he says uh, backs out. And I think it does. So I'm going to leave it. Okay. Uh, looking through the timeline, I can see someone here saying Isaac uh, helped me with a case that almost buried me alive. It would have been interesting to listen to that testimony. Um, but I have someone called uh, Tumsime. Tumsime, please ask your question. I made you speak up and meet yourself and ask your question. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Please proceed. Yes. Uh, mine, uh, I'm, a, I'm a medical student, so mine will be a more philosophical question than a, a question uh, that is based on the law because uh, I'm not really informed with that. After reading uh, Council Semakade's uh, article, I read the whole entirety of it, the whole eight pages of it. And it is safe to say it was uh, somewhat, metaphorically speaking, a declaration of war. The Attorney General holds uh, a very paramount office in this country. Some would say that an attack to him would be an attack to, to the state. I'm curious and I would like to know mm -hmm. how far and if is Kansas Semakade prepared to handle the heat that they rain? Question number two. Uh -huh. um, an engine, a combustion engine starts with a spark. I believe Kansas Semakade can be that spark to a new uh, revolutionary radical era. What's what's his plan in the long run? What's the end game? What's his home run? Thank you. All right. Uh, let, let me answer Mr. Tumsime very quickly. Mr. Tumsime, if you read my article, you would know that we have arrested an Afrika general. Yes. We have, we, we, we have tried them, we have prosecuted them, and we have convicted them. If you read the article, you would know this. Joseph Ekemu, an attorney general, who committed a number of crimes, including theft of money that was supposed to pro provide compensation to fellow intercepts, ate it with his personal assistant, and they went to jail. He was also summoned by the law council and disciplined for misappropriation of a client's fund of 30 million shillings. These are records. If you read, to understand, to believe, not to deny, you are in self-denial to Musime. 
you like worshiping golden calves. I, I don't blame you. This is how they taught you. Semakad is offering you a cabbage or rebirth at the bar. I have told you you will bury Shiyomashwanka. Should I win the mandate, you begin to bury him spiritually. And physically, we might even convict him as you live. You shall witness it. You must start to believe it. His crimes exist. I am running for this office so that I can be trusted with the evidence. There are those holding on to the evidence of these crimes. I am running to convince them to hand it over to me. And I will use the full force of the office of the bar president to teach you a lesson and to teach you generations of lawyers a lesson. So the second thing you're saying, so, so, so stop exaggerating that finding fault in the Assembly General is to collapse the state. No sense. No sense. Stop simping. Okay. Yeah, there uh, was a second question, if you can remind me. Uh, um, Tomasima, would you like to repeat the second question? Yes, um, the second question is, and thank you for the, for the, for the wonderful submission. Uh, as a person who believes in polarity, I think you'd respect the fact that everyone has an entitlement to the opinion. Don't defend yourself, just give me the second question. Yes, sir. Um, what is, what is the, the long run plan? Yeah, what for is you? the long plan? Yes, my friend, we're asking for a radical new bar. Don't ask for my plan. Come to the table and put your plan. Okay, I am giving you a fresh canvas to write fresh dreams. If you can't dream, leave the bar. Run out, go and be a mere citizen. Don't stay at the bar if you can't dream. Okay? My role as leader is to provide representation. And I've told you, I'm going to offer you a fresh canvas to write fresh heroes. You can put your name on the canvas of heroes. Okay. If you right. have no plan for radical new bar, sorry for you. Others have. It is okay. Um, thank you, Council. Let's have a question from uh, Adija. Adija, please uh, speak to us. Hadija, are you there? We seem to have lost Hadija. Don't go with you. Uh, do you still have a question? Dungu? Okay, I wanted to read some feedback that has come through. Someone sent me a DM. It's quite interesting. I'll just read through this very fast. He says, um, every culture has its version of the holy fool. In Hans Christian Andersen's famous children's tale, the emperor's new clothes, the king walks down the street in what he has been told. What he has been told is a magical outfit. No one says a word except a small boy who cries out, saying, look at the king. He's not wearing anything at all. The little boy is a holy fool. The tailors who sold the king his clothes told him they would not be invisible to anyone and fit for their job. The adult said nothing for fear of being incompetent. The little boy didn't care. The closest we have to holy fools in modern life are whistleblowers like Isaac Semakadi. They are willing to sacrifice loyalty to their institution and in many cases the support of their peers in the service of exposing fraud and deceit. He submits. That, that came through to my DM. <laughs> I don't know if you have a comment about his submission. Well, I, 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 I think that uh, that is to put it too far. In fact, uh, mm. just recently, the deceased former Attorney General, uh, Honorable mm. Chidu Makubia, he, 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 he wasn't brought down by Holy Fool. You know, mm. he, he, mm. he was entangled in a mess. You mm. know, there was such a relevant mess. Mm. And, and, and his fellow colleagues, mm. you know, threatened a, a such kubo like motion of censure against him. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. but the man had a, a modicum, a remnant of decency about mm. him. Okay, and and, mm. and he pleaded with colleagues to permit mm. him to resign and retire with, with some honor and dignity. Mm. Okay, so mm. I, I would like to celebrate him mm. posthumously mm. for that act of resignation. <laughs> uh, Isaac, uh, there is something I wanted to bring here because I see one fellow on the timeline who is uh, who is asking <laughs> why is this man so rude? So why is he shouting at people? Are simply asking. I think you might need to explain your style and fashion to some of these people who might not know you quite well. They seem to take so personal your passion when you are expressing yourself. Uh, yeah. Not at this moment. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, as are we uh, coming towards the end of this uh, session? We've had a couple of questions from the listeners coming through. And um, now uh, you have been on the campaign trail. You've gone to Eastern Uganda. You've been to Western Uganda. And you've... So, would you... Pay you know the practice of law is uh, on the outskirts, I mean, in the, in the upcountry, um, uh, when compared with the lawyer, the advocates that are practicing in Kampala, uh, from your tours. Sorry, uh, uh, at some point I lost you, if you can. Okay. No, using using what you have gathered um, in your upcountry tours, could you paint for us a picture 
um, on the difference uh, in terms of condition, working conditions, um, uh, efficiency of the judiciary and these kind of things, uh, the difference in the practice of law by advocates that are operating within the capital and those that are operating in the upcountry towns and cities. Uh, and how you think, mm. and how, how you think the ULS could intervene um, if you are at its helm anyway? There's little difference between the local bar and the national bar, except one. The, 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 the peripheral bars that I visited have greater resilience um, of the advocate and the law firm institution uh, the, uh, than those in the center. There is greater, there's a greater quality of life um, here. There's greater co cooperation and collaboration. And, uh, but that's as far as it goes. Uh, the, the rest of the conditions of practice mm. are disgraceful, are equally disgraceful and concerning mm. uh, here and uh, in the center. Uh, mm. they, they, they have the same. Whereas here they complain more about tyranny of, of the lower bench, uh, but the high court has been introduced nearly in every corner of the country. So they will soon complain about the tyranny of the, of the, of the, of the, of the upper bench very soon. Uh, in, of course, in the center, uh, they, 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 they have both they, they complain about you know bottlenecks in the justice pipeline from both the upper and uh, and upper and lower bench. There is a uh, the, the but the, the uniting factor across is that Chiyo Wachiwanka's tenure as Attorney General has singularly you know suffocated legal practice, suffocated judicial practice, and as of this month, it has begun to suffocate. Uh, police, military, and security practice because he has appointed himself. I don't think he has a mandate from those institutions. He has appointed himself their spokesperson in, in, in advocating for the removal of prohibition and prevention of torture guarantees in the Constitution and in the statute, doing massive damage to the security organizations. I don't know whether he, I, I don't know, but I will investigate. And soon, if I'm elected, I will get to understand exactly where he's getting. The, the instructions to speak like this and, and continue to harden community attitudes against the security apparatus. Nonetheless, I can tell you, colleagues, at some point before Friday, you will get the full list of charges that I have gathered against Joe Wachwanka and those who hide behind him to steal your lunch, to steal your milk, to steal your future as you humbly bow to etiquette, to decorum, to rules of civility, and waiting in line for him to remember you and invite you and give you a job in the judiciary, a job in the Judicial Service Commission, a job at LODC, a job at the Law Reform Commission, and, and to help you clear your, your winnings, which you have to by right. So what has been reported to me by, to, to, by lawyers for doing a litany of wrongs that constitute Violation of the principle of independence of the legal profession. He has interfered, obstructed, stifled legal practice in ways I'm not prepared to speak now, but I'm going to speak upon my return. I shall speak. I shall accuse properly in good English, in proper syllables, such that you have no further excuse when I tell you you have a singular problem and it can be dealt with through the ballot. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank uh, you, Council. Uh, let me take well, another question from Melvin. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Melvin, can you unmute yourself and, and, and ask your question? Maybe as Melvin unmutes, can I come through? Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, this one is just to, there's a gentleman there who is a medical student that read Samaka Day's article. I just wanted to make this comment. That is for him and all other people who are non-lawyers, that at the end of the day, as advocates or attorneys or lawyers or whatsoever, you do not take offense in the mode of delivery of the message as long as you pay particular attention to the message in itself. One of my idols is Trump, and I like that about him. I don't care how you talk. I don't care how you campaign. How you, As long as what you're promising to do or the policy you're bringing on the table will cause change. So do not take offense in any tone of anyone, him or any other person. Let's focus on the message. For the advocates and lawyers, as long as you've gone through law school, you know. Maybe the example I can use is those that went to market. You had your lecturers that sounded however they wanted to sound, but it was never personal. But their message was spot on. So let's focus on the message, not on its mode of delivery. Those are the antics of other people from the FLN network and other people that want to hinge on the Quran. So let's stay on track. Let's focus on policies and the message being delivered. Thank you. 
Okay, Melvin, are you now able to ask? Thank you, uh, Pascal. You're welcome. Melvin? Melvin, you seem not to be prepared, so I'd like to uh, move on to another person. Uh, okay, so I have another question that has been sent to me here. Uh, good evening, Mr. Gessa. I have a question too. So the question goes as follows. How shall Council Semakade effectively balance his promise of a radical, of radical legal, structural and political reform against the establishment and his administrative duty of the Uganda Law Society as a statutory body to smoothly work with the state stroke government, that is including Attorney General as the ULS Act stipulates, how will he strike an effective balance that achieves both ends since uncompromising extremism on one end is clearly counterproductive to the other. This, I don't know how many times you have to explain this thing for people to get it. Yeah? <laughs> those people, those people are nothing to us. Those people are nothing to us. Those people mm. have never done anything that shifts the needle. Mm in legal practice. Mm. So they can sit pretty in their stilettos and imagine mm. that clean, shaven, debonair, double-breasted gentlemen in suits at pulpits mean good. Mm. And those who criticize them mean bad. Mm. But should they ever dare to stand up and do something mm. that shifts the needle, mm. they will learn with immediate shock mm. that okay. the prison has actually been standing on his teeth and what they thought was a prism sitting on the base was a mere hologram. There was no prism to begin with. Those people are living in Phantasmagoria. We should leave them there. All right. Um, I hear you. Uh, the next one has been sent to me directly by one advocate. He says, uh, hello, Mr. Gesser, thank you for organizing this space. Kindly tell Sema Kade that the world is behind him. The Uganda Law Society is a national bar that holds the hope of every Ugandan. We love the fact that many Ugandans are taking interest in this election. Kindly, as Mr. President, uh, ask Mr. President about his plan on political prisoners because it's a matter of urgency too. Um, he has another question. Maybe you'll start with that and then I'll fill the next. The, 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 the issue mm. of political prisoners mm. Every shows you the damage mm. uh, of having a crook, an empty head, and a good Christian, or a good Muslim, or a good mm. establishment man who wants to m have smooth relations with the state in this office. Mm. Okay? For four years, for four years, mm. the leaders we've had at the bar have done nothing to enforce a decision of the Constitutional Court mm. that the General Court trial of civilians are unlawful, unconstitutional. Mm. And when we asked, we were told that there are meetings happening, mm. you know, to, to, to persuade the Chief Justice to give us a constitutional appeal session. I wrote two articles after my president, Bernard Ondo, couldn't do anything for me, couldn't prove to me that he had even met the Chief Justice. He had even written to him to seek a meeting over this issue. I wrote my own two articles and they're online. The first one is, why are Supreme Court judges eating money for free? Mm. Huh? Mm. I don't know if I use eating or earning. Earning money for what? Mm. For free. Because the, the, the Supreme Court, mm. from which Chile Wachuanuka had still city, obtained a questionable stay of execution order against the release of political prisoners, suddenly was closed at the hand of one man mm. in April 2022. And it wasn't open until a week after my article ran in November of 2022. Seven months. Seven months where 10 judge, judges, justice of the Supreme Court, we are, we are taking 30 million each per home, eh, per month. Why are you saying at home? Well, one of the judges retorted that, Isaac, you haven't addressed your mind to Rule 20 of the Supreme Court rules. The sole give of business in the, in the Supreme Court, which he has question appeals, is the Chief Justice. And it's, it's only, quote unquote, his chambers which received, you know, a fire hazard, and he closed all of us without providing alternatives. I make the arguments in there. So, those of you who think that we can't do smooth talk and that what we are suggesting is extreme, you're wrong. Radical is not extreme. Radical is not extreme. We're asking to bang the table. We could quite easily have said crack the table. We could quite easily have said smash the table. We could quite easily have said bust the table. Mm. We're saying bang the table. And we can give you a tone. Bang slowly. Bang loudly. <laughs> bang loudly. So, you are, you are not saying crack the table, uh, break the table. You are saying bang the table. Yes, for now. We need the table, but it needs so now, to be banged. Yeah. So there's nothing extreme about what I'm saying. Mm. So stop, right. uh, stop mm. polluting community attitudes against okay. the solutions giver. Perfect. 
So next question that he asks is, uh, Mr. President, a lot is in a mess, apparently at institutions such as the URSB, the National ID Registration Authority, NIRA, and others, which would employ lawyers, have embarked on employing incompetent people. How do you intend to protect the would-be areas of specialization for lawyers, which seem to be vanishing each day? That, that, that question, mm. that question involves the president in a, a slippery slope uh, to, to nowhere, to be frank with colleagues. We should have a uniform, consistent policy of challenging appointments that don't pass constitutional master anywhere and everywhere. Instead of asking for, you know, special treatment within the <laughs> realm of mm. neoliberal special cooker conditions under which mm. labor is mm. labor is operationalized in this country. Mm. Let me give you just a few examples. Mm. How, how 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 credible shall we be to ask for those things when we didn't challenge a judge accessing the office of a prosecutor? Mm. Justice Abodo followed Justice Chivita in committing a gross violation of the rule of law, a gross violation of the independence of the judiciary mm. by occupying the office of a prosecutor and while maintaining a leg in the judiciary. They mm. did that against two judgments. Mm. The, the case of Jim Wesley Vice Attorney General, where he challenged Justice Faith Monda, mm. you know, being a judge and doing the job of a policeman. They did that against him. Mm. Yes, yes, ombudsman. An ombudsman mm. is a policeman. An ombudsman mm. polices, eh, mm. enforces the leadership code. So mm. he or she is a policeman. Mm. Or policewoman. Mm. Okay? A law enforcer, they enforce the leadership code. So they police the mm. leadership code. Mm. Um... They investigate violations and they must provide a report to the leadership tribunal mm. to conduct a, you know, mm. an impartial trial. That is the lesson in the case mm. of John Ken Luchams, mm. first attorney general, where the, again, Justice Monda, you know, did too much and was found to, to be offside, constitutionally mm. speaking. So, let me go to the issue. So, you can imagine, the DPP is in charge mm. of setting the tone for proper recruitment in that department. Mm. Okay. If you didn't challenge the Public Service Commission in how a DPP is recruited, only Isaac Semakade has done that mm. at the African Court of Justice in mm. reference number 15 of 2020. The rest of you are stuck on her being called a vagina from Karamoja. The rest of you are stuck on those moralisms. Semakade has moved on. He's in the skies of, of Kilimanjaro mm. arguing hard doctrinal purity. Conversations in which we are not involved. Mm. And so you ask me to come from the clouds of Kilimanjaro to come and help you fight for Mukene. Mm. On the showers mm. of Masese, mm. it becomes difficult. I want to give you the whole world. Mm. And you're asking me to give you a dead world. A whole new world, you ask me to give you a dead world. A dead and decaying world. Those jobs are gone. Those jobs are not legal jobs. Those jobs are paralegal jobs. Those jobs are being taken by digitalization. Those jobs are being taken, you know, by many forces. If ever they were our jobs, they have ceased to be. Mm. It is inconsistent to fight for them. The role of lawyers at the bar is purely deals and disputes. Efficiency in deals and disputes. In a, in a global new order. Mm. So how do you become efficient as a practitioner in the deal segment? How do you become efficient as a practitioner in the mm. dispute resolution segment? Mm. Other colleagues are stepping up, mm. improving their credentials, entering cutting, cutting edge arbitration, you know, mm. in cutting edge fields, and so on and so forth. That's why we should be looking. Or we should be talking about how do we improve efficiency in a, in a, you know, in cross, cross border practice. Mm. Our forefathers, <laughs> Have, have refused to sign the cross-border protocols. Mm. Yeah. Infantilizing all of us, <coughs> living in fear of the Kenyan lawyer, of the Tanzanian lawyer, of the Mauritian lawyer. Well, guess what? They are mm. still here. They are here and they are eating your lunch. Mm. And you're doing nothing about it. They are here. Mm. They have eaten all your oil and gas money. You take crumbs. They have eaten all your banking and finance money. You take crumbs. I think the law firm of from Panga dropped Bowman's. Mm. You have never discussed the, the, the interest in that. Mm. But I would imagine it was a, a conflict over money. Mm. I don't know. I would like to know. I would like mm. to hear my senior speak with truth. Mm. Where they can tackle us drunkards. Mm. <laughs> How did the, that is, partnership mm. become mm. a dead body? What is the pathology of Bowman's mm. mm. and Efumfanga? Mm. You pranked here as Bowman's. Now you're back to Efumfanga. Mm. Explain. Pathologize us that that is. <laughs> Mm. 
where they can tank us drunkards. Interesting one. On that note, I want to, to bring the final question that came from this gentleman. Uh, he says that Kirio Wakiwanuka issued a binding opinion on the 25th of September 2023 stopping the Administrator General from issuing certificates of no objection for estates falling in the category of succession registers of Uganda without giving any remedy going forward. Mr. President, um, would you kindly treat this as a matter of urgency? I, I will do better. Mm. I will defer yeah. to the guidance given to us by Pascal Nkovic, mm. who is still on the